Today, I want to show you how to improve your favorite AI art and create variations that have the exact same composition as the original. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Again, today we are going to use the DForum Stable Diffusion Google Collab. Now, last time people have been a little bit confused because I let out a very important step when you want to set this up. So go to the link I provide in the video description and then you want to click here to connect and go through the first step here to click on this play button for the NVIDIA GPU. This is not your GPU, this is the Google server GPU. So don't worry, you don't need to have an NVIDIA graphic card. When you click this, you are asked for permission to use that laptop, say yes, and then go to the next step. When you click the next button, you are asked to connect this Google call up with your Google Drive. This is a very important step, so allow that and then wait for the check mark here to finish. Go to the next step, click again on the play button, wait for the check mark. Go to the next one, play button, check mark. Same story. But here is a very important step. This one here loads the model. Now you need to have the model on your own Google Drive. This is how you do that. You can see down here the location is in the folder on your Google Drive. There is a folder called AI and then a folder inside of that called Models. Now, when you don't have that folder models, just create that and you need to upload this file into that folder. This is the model. Now go to Google, search for that file. You can click on the first link. This is what I'm using here and simply download this file and then upload it to your Google Drive into the models folder. After this is done, Click here on the play button, wait for this to finish to get the green check mark. That can take a bit. So here comes the magic of improving your AI art and creating variations. First, I'm going to show you how to create variations with the exact same composition and color scheme. First of all, you need to set the animation mode to none. So click here on the pop down menu, select none and then click here on the play buttons to save that adjustment. The rest of these settings should not matter because we are not creating an animation. Now the next one is the prompt. This is pretty important. And when you want to create variations of your original work, I suggest to you to use the original prompt, but you can also use other prompts. The very important part here is you want to put this here into the prompt section, not into the animation prompt section. And also at the start and the end of your prompt, there needs to be a quotation mark. And behind the quotation mark at the end, you also want to have a comma. All right, after you've set this up, click here on the play button and wait for the green check mark. This saves your settings. Now here is the run setup on how you want to render this. If you want to create variations, what we're doing right now, put in here the same exact ratio. It doesn't have to be the same resolution. You can go with a higher resolution if you want to, but it has to be the exact same ratio. So in this case, I enter the exact width and height in pixels of the original image. The seed, set it to minus one. The sampler, you can choose and play around what you think is the best. Make some tests here. Steps, set them up to anything you want. You can go with 80 or 50 or 200. The quality varies, of course. The scale, I set to seven. If you use the DDIM render, I set the DDIM ETA to one. And then down here, the end batch, this is how many variations you're going to create after pressing the play button. In this case, I set it to 10. So it's automatically creating for me 10 variations. The next one is the batch name. This is the folder name where your images are ending up. And then after that, down here for the init setting, make a check mark for the use in it. This is very important. So it's using the image and the strength is the balance between the original image and the prompt. When you set the strength to one, it is only using the image. When you set it to something like 0.5, it is using 50% the original image and 50% your prompt. So what we want to do here is I have this image here of a cyborg geisha, but I want to have variations of that. So what you need to do 
is to upload that image file to see the temporary drive for your Google Colab. This will be deleted when you disconnect from the Google Colab. So be sure that you still have the file somewhere on your drive. Click here on that file icon and then simply go to your folder and upload that image by dragging it into that area. Wait for it to finish to upload. Now you go here, search for that file, right click, copy path. You want to go down here where it says init image and copy that path into here. So it stands here. And then after you've set all this up, simply click here on play. And this will go through the steps here. As you can see here, I've set it up to 80 steps, but it's only using 40 steps because I set it to 0 0.5. So only half of the steps have to be rendered. And you can see here that I have created variations of my cyborg geisha, but it has the exact same composition and color palette. So this is very useful for us. Now here comes the next trick and that is improving an old render. Here is something I want to suggest you do first. Download the file that you have. In this case, I have this file here. You can see the face doesn't look too good. And also there's a third hand down here and it is low resolution because it's a stable diffusion render. So what you want to do is to pull this into Gigapixel AI or use any other kind of upscaling software and scale this up rather large. Four times, six times your choice. Save that file as a JPEG so it's rather small. And then what I did is to go into Affinity Photo. You can see down here with a third hand. So I painted that out and we only have now the wings in the background. Again, we are dragging this fixed and upscaled file in here and wait for the upload. Now, in this case, again, we need to set the prompt. I've saved my prompt up here in a plugin. So let's let me copy that over. Again, I put this inside of the quotation marks. It's very important. And then I click here on the play button so the new prompt is saved. In the run settings, I will set my new size. In this case, 800 by 1000. I can leave the rest of the settings the same, but I need to copy the file path. So find the file, right click, copy path, go in here and post that here. I leave the strength at 0.5 and click on the play button. Again, this is going to use 40 steps. Now you can see from the variations we are getting that this gives us actually some pretty nice improvements. Play around with the weight of the image, set it to 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5 to see what kind of results you're getting. Now I want to show you my last trick for improving the faces. This is very much about the resolution of the face. So what I've done is to upscale the image in Gigapixel AI. Then I have cut out the face and also sharpened the face in Affinity Photo. After that, I've uploaded this by dragging it into my Google Colab temporary drive. And again, we right click here and put the path here into our init image space. In this case, we can use the exact same prompt, but I want to set, of course, my pixel resolution to 800 by 800. Let's let this render again. If you let this render multiple times, you get some interesting variations of that face. Again, play around with the image weight. And after you've decided on one face, download it to your drive, open the angel image up in Affinity Photo and then drag the face into that image. What you want to do next is to go to that layer, reduce the opacity to 50% so you can see both images at the same time, zoom in here and overlay them until they fit. Sometimes the face is a little bit too wide so you can skew this a little bit, you can see here until the face edge is hitting the face behind that. So adjusting that with the eyes, you can overlay that almost perfectly. Set the opacity back to 100%, then click down here to create a mask layer. This is already applied to our image layer and go here to layer invert. This is going to invert the mask, so it's going to be invisible. Now we want to have the paintbrush 
and set it to white. This will reveal the face and we want to paint over the area of the face. I've set the hardness to very soft and the size up to taste for the resolution of your image. And we are going to paint in only the face and only the parts we need. You can see like this. Here you can see that we have a much improved face from the original version that is also high resolution and it has the same color scheme, the same lighting and the same face position. Leave a like if you enjoyed this tutorial and see you soon. Bye.